Hello? Bless. All right. Hey, praise the Lord. All right, perfect. So, um, let me just hop into my pulpit. <laughs> you, know, you know, the car be the portable pulpit. Is, oh, God, it's so good. And there's something about there's something about preaching and driving. You never mm-hmm. really get to your destination because you just don't be paying attention to the exits. But it's it's good. It's good, you know. But um, mm-hmm. let us uh, we'll start with another prayer. Now, who, who's trying to call me? It don't matter. All right. Jesus, as we prayed, we pray one more time, Lord, and again and again and again and again. You can never stop pre- pre- uh, praying. Lord, forgive us for our sins, known and unknown. Wash us in your blood. Lord, guide us and keep us. And, Lord, we thank you for this time, this time of sharing, that we can we can go through your mighty word and get a deeper more intimate revelation of who Christ is. So we're forever grateful for what you show us, Lord, and, and the little nuggets that you do show us, Lord, because I know, Lord, that no person can handle the fullness of God but Christ himself. So, Lord, I know you give us increments and nuggets and measurements according to what we can handle, Lord. But we're just asking you to fill us to the brim right before the balloon pops. Fill us. We want to know as much of you as possible. We want to know you, Lord. We want to know your mind. We want to know your personality. We want to know the, the, the deep mysteries of you, oh God. We want to know. God, if we can just get a couple of those books that are in the library in heaven ahead of time and just kind of chill with you and read them together. We just want to know you more, Lord. And, Lord, please shape and mold our minds and our desire to be only that everything is second. Everything is but done when it comes to you. That, God, the only thing that really, truly matters is knowing you, who you are, and the fellowship of your sufferings, Lord. Knowing what, what it's like. What you went, what you went through on the cross, Lord. Yes. How can we truly know what it's like to be you, to be in your footsteps, to know what it was like as you walked the earth? If we don't have a Judas in our life, if we don't have a, a doubter, Thomas in our life, Lord, we we love you, Lord, and, and we know this stuff is not easy to ask for. I mean, how can one just boastfully say, give me a Judas, give me a Thomas, give, give me the same thing where even my own family members that I grew up with turn against me, or people that will constantly use me as they try to use you, Lord, Father. But, Lord, we know that you won't give us more than we can handle. Now saying, Blessed be the holy name of Jesus Christ, Yeshua Messiah, King of glory. Because it is written that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Things in heaven and earth and under the earth. So guide us. May your word go forth to convict a light unto our feet, healing, restoration, conviction, Correction, Jesus, become flesh in the midst. Because you said we're two or more gathered in your name. You're in the midst. So we believe you're here with us right now in the furnace. And we love you. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So, as as, uh, we'll we'll carry on with what we was talking about. You know, it's... You have all these different types of levels of, you know, Christians and their opinion on who Jesus Christ is. You know what I mean? And you remember we was talking about how, um, and you mentioned it again, and I I totally forgot I mentioned it um, in, like, last week's Bible study, how 
you know, so many Christians are outside of the, the, the castle of Jesus Christ, you know, trimming the bushes and never really desiring to enter into his palace and actually go into his, um, his um, you know, what do they call that, the throne room and fellowship with him and eat with him. They never even really even ask. They They put on this false type of humbleness like, oh, I'm fine where I am, Jesus. Just being outside of your gates is good enough for me. You know what I mean? And I don't really think the Lord respects that. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. If somebody is the worst of sinners and they get shot and as they're dying, they're bleeding out, they say, Lord Jesus, forgive me. I'm so sorry. I've denied you my whole life. But, Lord, I know my mama told me you were the way. Lord, as I'm dying, please receive me into your kingdom as the man on the cross, right? Because to me, that was just, that right there blew the heads off of the people watching. You know what I mean? Just think about that. What about the other man to the cross who was mocking Jesus and, and, and kind of like cursing at Jesus or whatever it is he was doing? When he mm-hmm. seen the Son of God forgive all of us and ask the Father to forgive us and say, truly this day you will be with me in heaven, Right? Now, I understand in that type of situation for the man to be like, Lord, even if I could just be the waiter at your table, I just want to be around you. You know what I'm saying? I get that. I know there's certain things the Lord will, uh, um, you know, receive. But as far as Christians that don't really desire the Lord like that, they kind of like hop on the bandwagon and just kind of go with the motions of things, but they never really truly even try to get into the depths of a God. Try to seek the unsearchable riches of Christ, right? How many times, right. brother, do we hear about Paul talking about, you know, search the riches of Christ. You know, all God shall supply all my needs through the riches of, of Christ Jesus. You know, you hear all of these scriptures where Paul has given us clues and hints and signs to be like, yo, the unsearchableness of God. God is... God is like a, I can't even say he's like anything, you understand? But as a, a comparison, how you, when, like, I, for example, how much of the earth is covered in water in the ocean, right? Do you know mm-hmm. that science, scientists say we haven't even searched, we haven't even got to 85% of it? Mm-hmm. You know what? That's how great the ocean water is, that with all the human beings on this planet and the technology we got, we've only scraped 10, 15 percent of the depth of the ocean. So imagine Christ, how much unsearchable riches are waiting for somebody to discover. Like, you remember the old lady in Titanic? Keep it real. Everybody's seen that movie in the world. <laughs> I took my mama to see that movie, B. You know what I mean? I ain't going to front of, you know, I was, you know, back then I was in the midst of gangs and stuff. I still got teary-eyed, bro. I was like, man, why they had to do them like that, B? You know what I mean? Remember when she threw that million-dollar diamond thing off the ship? Mm. She just tossed that off the boat into the ocean. Someday, somebody's going to find that, right? Hypothetically speaking in the movie, right? Like, <laughs> you ever hear, like, you ever hear, like, on the news, divers found this, you know, trillion-dollar treasure, 1,500 years old. It don't even got a price on it, right? It was just sitting there waiting for somebody to discover it, Right? Imagine all the riches in Christ that he is just waiting for us to desire and go where he wants us to go in him where we would actually find that treasure. Well, what do I mean by treasure? Wisdom of who he is, knowledge of who he is, power, authority, truth. The man said, what is truth? Remember? Was it Pontus? Mm. said, what is truth? And I kind of got like, Lord, why are you teasing us? You cut that part out. Like, <laughs> yo, come on, Lord. Let me hear what you said to him. But 
it's amazing to me, and I know I've said this before, and, brother, any time you can cut me off and add in anything, all right? If the, if the Holy Ghost drop a scripture in you, just, you already know how we eat. One brings the potatoes, one brings carry. you know what I'm saying? But mm-hmm. watch this. So Paul, right? Paul said, I wasn't taught it by men, but by revelation. It was almost like a computer, how a computer sits on your desk, right? But you can take a CD and put it into the computer and upload more data into the computer. The computer didn't have to do nothing. You push the open button on the door, slide out, you put the CD in, put it in, click a button, and upload mad knowledge into the computer, right? It's Mm -hmm. like how the Holy Ghost uploaded revelation of Christ and who he was and is to Paul. And how, remember I said how Paul, there was so much that he wanted to tell us, but he couldn't because we couldn't handle it. Remember he said that? No. Yeah. Like, think think about how that feels, bro. To to bathe in glory, to be so joyful that God would show you deep revelation of who he is, but then he turned around and says, really, no one else can handle it. So don't put that in the books. Man. You know what I mean? It's like drawing an amazing picture, and you want to run around and show everybody how good God drew through you this amazing portrait. You was at this mountaintop, and you drew it perfectly, but you couldn't show anybody. (laughs) So, you know, I really believe that most people that want to argue all day long about Jesus Christ. Is he God or is he not God? Is he a son of God and just a son of God or is he the Father as well? Is it just Jesus in heaven or is there Father, Son, and Holy Ghost? What is it? Like, you get all these people that are fighting, right, bro? Yeah. But most of them people aren't really truly, now I don't say all because that's pessimistic, but most of the people don't truly really desire and don't seek Christ, they get a little bit of data, a little bit of scripture, pick a side, and fight the war against their fellow Christian. True or false? Right. Right? So it's like, if only we would stop and just say, Lord, I have to know more about you. You know what I admire so much and I know I mentioned this, was it, was it the um, last Bible study? When, when um, e- Elisha, would re- he refused to let Elijah out of his sight. Remember that? Yeah. He was like, oh, man, where you going, man? Oh, yo, Elijah, yo, he's funny, yo. He tried to dip on him. Just, <laughs> yo, Elisha, do me a favor. Go to the store and get me a bag of chips. Okay. Soon as he turned the corner, he was gathering up his tent. He was out of there. But Elisha was like, "Oh man, where you going? Oh man, don't play with me, old man. Uh huh. I'm not leaving no sight until I get that double portion." And what did Elijah say? And hey, that's a hard thing to ask for, B. See, you don't know what you're asking for. To get a double portion, of what I got means you got to get a double portion of persecution. You also got to get a double portion of the attack. Oh, this is good. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. <laughs> Yo, hold on one second. Do not hang up because I know this is the Lord. Hold on one second. Mm. You can hear me now? Yeah, I hear you. Uh, let me turn it up again for you. Right? So look at on the same note, look at um look at uh, right? Look at Jacob. Jacob refused to let God go until he blessed him, even with a broken hip or whatever bone it was. Hold on one second. Hold on, hold on. Yo, you can hear me? Yeah. 
All right, so he refused to let God go. He wrestles with God. Even with a broken hip bone, he was like, what? What did he say, brother? What did he say? I will not let you bless me. You bless me. All right, and, and how did God operate? What did God do? Uh, what what, did, what happened? I don't remember. He blessed him. Hello? Yeah, I keep getting this. Let me um, let me settle this so I stop getting interrupted. Hold on one second. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. All right, you can hear me. Yeah. Yo. Yep. All right. So watch this. So he wouldn't let him go until he blessed him, even with a broken bone, cuz. How many brothers you know can take a baseball bat to the side of your hip, have it smashed, and you still going toe-to-toe with a brother? All right. Bro, I don't care. A brother break his toe, he's down and out. <laughs> Just, you might as well sit him down on the sideline, B. He is not fighting that. Imagine the passion he had when he would he refused to let God go. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. where am I going? What, what what is the point of that? Right? Like why bring that up? This is what God is expecting from us, right? This is what God is expecting from us. See, all right, if I could ask you, um, on a scale from 1 to 10 as a whole, how, what do you think the percentage is that Christians are actually seeking God like that? Honestly, man? Yeah, in, in an honest opinion. I would, I would say 20%. Yo, can I tell you, that's a terrifying answer, but it seems like the truth, cuz. It seemed like the truth, cuz. But let me ask you a question, though. With God, it's supernatural, right? With God, you can have almost all of Christianity horribly lukewarm, but have just 10% genuinely seeking him. Is it enough to move God? Yeah, more than enough. Oh, I love that answer. That's what I love about the Lord. It's enough for him. That's what I'm saying. A lot of Christians that I speak with that are hungry for God, true, they do. They focus on the lack. They focus on how many Christians are not seeking the Lord. And they have to focus on it. They have to cry out against that. But what they fail to do is say, well, I mean, at the end of the day, it's not going to stop God. It's not going to stop God's will. God is still going to get done what he's got to get done, period. And if I got to be the only one interceding for Sodom and Gomorrah like Abraham, so be it. Abraham didn't go back to camp and say, Sarah, gather everybody up. We got to go right above the mountains of Sodom and Gomorrah and, and plead with God. What did Abraham do? Yeah, I'm yeah. in this fight. I'm, I'm in this fight alone, bro. <laughs> Yo, see, that's the joy. That's that's the hope we got to look forward to, that we can trust that, okay, so many Christians are so far from Christ. So many Christians are so deceived. But there's some that are not. That's why, you know, I love God's answer to Elijah. Elijah was like, you know, I don't know how, I, don't, I know he didn't mean it in a boastful way. He meant it in a way like, man, this is whack, Lord. Like, I'm the only one, Lord. What did the Lord mm-hmm. say? Since I got Lord, seven, what, 7,000? I believe that's what it is, 7,000. I got 7,000 just like you, son. <laughs> so be encouraged. Because, see, we got to remember, yo, there's some serious, serious prayer warriors Serious prayer warriors in, in like, you know, Afghanistan, China, Sudan, 
people that are crying. Yo, when I seen that video, I know you've seen it. Did you see the one where our beloved brothers and sisters in China received their Bibles? Mm-hmm. Did, did, well, did when they what? When they, when they received no. their Bibles? Mm. Oh, I, I, what I'll do, man, is um, either post it on the site or I'll just send you the link. Yo, All right. you want to talk about something that'll just make you just sit down. Yo, these people were crying. I'm talking like, like almost like if a wife has a, if a wife lost her husband for 20 years and then got him back. Those type of tears. I'm talking tears like, you know what I mean? Like when your mama spanked you when you was a child, man. You, huh, 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 right? Yo, they was man. weeping so hard. So hard, cuz. Just because they finally got their hands on their own personal Bible. I remember. I, have you seen the one? The Aborigines? The Aborigines, um... What's it called? They the plane flew in. They finally got the New Testament in their language. Yo, they had a no. whole ceremony. Oh my God in heaven, I love you, Lord, bro. When you see this, I gotta make sure I send you the link. Yo, these these Indians in like either the jungles of Australia, New Guinea, one of those places, right? They they're Christian, but they were only Christian by missionaries of the story of Christ, but they never had a Bible in their language. You understand? Right? And, yo, they see the plane coming from the sky, and they're all in dressed in beautiful, you know, outfits adorned, and they're praising, they're crying. The women, ah, da, 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 you know what I'm saying? And the plane lands, yeah. and they pull out the boxes that have the Bibles. Yo, the the man of God that leads all the people there was like, in his own language, like, Lord God, that you would bless us with the word of the Lord Jesus Christ, that you would bring your message even unto the depths of where we are. And they was all weeping with tears, and he blessed the Lord. Bro, can you imagine? Can you imagine how pleased God was? So we got to get a whole new look on, you know, the Bible itself that, all right, again, who is Christ, right? So that's what we're talking about today. Who is Jesus Christ? Who is he? Okay, he's the son of God. I got you. All right, he's the son of man. He's the lamb of God. But it goes so deeper, so deeper. Mm -hmm. Bro, let me ask you a question. Scientifically, in the Holy Ghost, I give you all the praise. When I speak to you, right, let's say I say, brother, I love you and your family. May the Lord truly bless you. And I mean it with all my heart, right? What causes you to hear my words? Oxygen, right? Air? Because if, if you was in outer space, you could not... We couldn't hear each other because words, words travel, words travel. It literally travels through air to get to your earlobe. That if there's no oxygen, if there's no air, you would just go, you couldn't talk. Did you know that? No. Nah. Watch this. You, I mean, these are all things, you know, anybody can look up. Anybody, you know what I mean, can look this up, and they can see, they can see that, that that's the truth. So what really is words? Let's think about this for a minute. What really is words? If, if you look your wife in the eye and say, I love you, sweetheart. If I look my wife in the eye and say, I love you, and I love her, right? It is mm -hmm. me manifested in a, in, a, in a physical realm. It is my personality, my heart, my spirit translated into an audio vibration sent through the air, through your ear, 
and into your spirit, man, or whoever we're talking to, in this case our wives, where they can actually feel our emotion and our heart. Nah. Listen to this again. The words we say are us. It's literally me. The only reason I can speak to you is because every feeling that I'm saying right now, it starts as a thought from the heart, right? And then mm. my body, because of the brilliant creation of God, my body vibrates air up through my 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 um my neck, all the tubes, whatever they call it, it rolls off my tongue, and I can speak certain words to express my inner man who you can't hear with your your ears. You understand? So if, if it wasn't for air and being able to vibrate through the air and make audio noises, how could I ever know your personality? How could I ever know your heart? if you couldn't express it. Jesus Christ, right? Oh, my God in heaven, Lord, really. This is so, this is so amazing. The Bible says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Jesus Christ is the literal heart and personality of God manifested. The same way when we talk, our inner man, our heart, our personality manifests into a physical word that vibrates into our ears so we can hear each other and know who we are. Jesus Christ is God manifested as a word, cuz. He is the personality of God literally. He is the heart of God. This is terrifying that we would put the heart of God on a cross. The actual mind of God, the personality of God, the, the, the thoughts of God became flesh. He's more than just the son of God. That's only one title, glorious title, but it's only one title. He's also the everlasting father. He's also the prince of peace. The great I am. The living water, the bread of life, the eternal Sabbath. There's so many titles that Jesus Christ carries. This is what is so amazing. That we're just scratching the surface of who Christ really is. I, anybody could just be like, yeah, he's God. And that's, you qualify right there. You're right. But why are we stuck outside trimming bushes? Why don't we go into the, into the palace of Jesus Christ and get to know him deeper? I, yo, I know, I know for a fact that he has a favorite food. He got a favorite color. He got a favorite son. You feel me, brother? Yeah. Yo, I want to know these things about Jesus Christ. To me, a husband or a wife that really loves each other wants to know everything about one another, right? You're married. I'm married. We agree on this. Yeah. I want to know everything about my wife. I want to make. I want to know what makes her smile. I want to know what makes her happy. I want to know what makes her upset. I want to know what bothers her. I want to know her past. I want to know everything about her. How much more should I want all that for Jesus Christ, my eternal husband? <laughs> now, listen to this carefully. I remember God gave this as a gift when I baptized humbly, was able to baptize uh, a man and his wife, right, at a lake. You know, we hooded it out, went down there, you know what I mean? Boom, baptized. As they was coming up the water, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, right? Mm -hmm. We're walking back, they're dripping wet, and it dropped in my spirit. Oh, no, was it on the way? 
yes, it was on the way, um, walking out of the parking lot down to the beach, the Lord gave me a gift. Let me, let me, let me explain this a little deeper, right? Because a lot of people don't really comprehend this. The Bible says that Jesus Christ is the last Adam, or some would say the second Adam, correct? Right. The, the, in Corinthians, in fact, um, at some point we can go to it, but I really, I expect anybody that would hear a Bible study like this or anything like this, they should know these scriptures. If not, they need to flip them up and find them. Because too many Christians want to be spoon-fed all the time. You see that, brother? You notice that? Where's that, brother? Where's that one? Where is that one? Do you know any of them? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? What, uh, we're the only ones that got to study to show ourselves approved. Oh, I get it. You get spoon-fed for 30 years. We got to tell you where every scripture is. You don't know where none are. Bro, you see that, right? Mm-hmm. With a lot of Christians, because I get it. It's okay. We should tell. But it comes a line where people also have to study themselves. You know what I'm saying? Because in a way, it kind of slows down the Bible study. Like, I got to stop and look for a verse I know is in the Bible just to satisfy a person. Like, come on, man. But in Corinthians, it says that Jesus Christ is the last Adam and the second Adam, right? So we comprehend, oh, my God, Jesus, thank you so much for this word, Lord. I pray this word will break the yoke off of people, Jesus. So the, the anointing breaks the yoke. In Jesus' name. So we know that Adam was our earthly father, right? All right. And everybody knew Adam's our earthly father. He birthed all of us. He started this race. But yet there's a problem with that earthly father. He placed a curse on all of us at one point. For those that are born again, I say that. But for those that are not, still got the curse, right? But there was a curse that spread through his seed, through his loins, that whatever child would come would be cursed, right? Mm -hmm. So my question is, when Jesus Christ came, right, what really happened? Jesus Christ became the, the, the new Adam. He finished off, he was the last Adam. He finished off the Adamic race, bro. This is another mystery that you can't really be even driving preaching because you'll be swerving. Mm -hmm. Because you know I'll be preaching when I'm driving the whip sometimes. But, yo, listen to this. Jesus Christ started a new race. (laughs) Yo, let me ask you a question, my beloved. What man, God man, will be ruling on earth? What God man? Yep. Jesus Christ, right? Jesus mm-hmm. Christ, right? He's still man. Mm-hmm. He's still a man. Everybody agrees on that, right? He's still God Almighty and he's still fully man. He's just now a what? A glory he got his he 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 deserved And he earned his glorified body, right? Unbreakable, unshakable, can't do nothing, right? No against that. He earned his eternal body. What if I told you that Jesus Christ, see, you see the mystery of God, right? Because the Bible, when speaking about Jesus Christ, says something very interesting, doesn't it? It says, in Christ dwells the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Mm-hmm. Now, honestly, bro, an average Christian to read that and just breeze right over it and just keep, like, fake the funk, like, amen, but don't really understand what that means. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It's like, mm-hmm. hold on. The entire being of God dwells in Christ. The fullness of God is in Christ. So, seeing Christ on the throne as a man forever, but yet we got God the Father. Remember what the Bible says, right? 
Jesus Christ is the what? The image of the invisible God, right? Oh. Yo, this is amazing. So Jesus Christ is the image of the invisible God. So what what wow. you're telling me is that we have heaven and earth, right? Because God is creating what? Wow. A new heaven and a new earth, right? Yeah. So then, what's, when we read Revelation, and, and, and it's amazing how we hear Jesus Christ speaking about his God. <laughs> oh, my Lord. But yet, we're going to have Jesus Christ as our physical God the Father, right? He is God mm. the Father in flesh, walking around. He's going to be walking around as God in the flesh forever, come. Think about this for a minute. But yet we've got God the Father on the throne in heaven for eternity, come. What? Yeah. Hold on, hold on. What? That's why I tell people, man, so many people swerve to the right and left lane, and nobody wants to just be in the middle of the road. Right? Mm-hmm. Like, I remember I remember there was an argument going on with um, G. Craig Lewis, um, with someone else or something like that, and they was talking about how G. Craig Lewis, and may God bless him, and another man was, was debating on, okay, G. Craig Lewis at one point, I don't know if he still believes this, but it's wrong, even though he's blessed, and I'm not throwing stones at him, but he said the Antichrist is not going to be a literal man, right? But he's just the spirit of Antichrist that's going to dwell in the temples of those people, right? And then another man yeah. say, G. Craig, you're wrong, because in the Greek where it says the son of perdition, the man of sin, that word man is anthropos, which means a literal man. You're wrong, right? But yet both of them are right and both of them are wrong. Because one says it's, all, it's going to be a literal man, no spirit. One says it's just the spirit of Antichrist, no man, but in the middle of the road. Who's right, bro? Both they of them. both. Be- yeah, right, because there's going to be a literal man, Antichrist, and there's a literal spirit of Antichrist that gets into the temples of those who worship the man Antichrist. So what about the middle of the road when it comes to Jesus Christ? Man. You got, yeah. let, let's keep it 100. Most of the church is broken down into two sects, isn't it? Most of the church. Mm-hmm. You have those that believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, and there's God the Father. They're separate. They're, they're God, but they're really two different people, right? And that Jesus mm-hmm. is not the Father. Then you got some that say that Jesus Christ is God the Father, but there's only one God. He is three manifested in one. Where, where should we drive, bro? In the middle. In the middle of the road. There is a Don't God the Father. Huh? I just want to say this, like yeah. you, you, you absolutely right about that is divided, but and and it's the same thing we were talking about. But if that person will really take the time and get with Christ, Christ will show them that, uh, so they wouldn't be uh, on one side; they will be in the middle. But right. what happens is, it's something that's been taught to them from their mother, from their father, whoever. And they just go with it. They never really, really sit down and get along with it and say, oh, oh, now I see it. It's just, no, 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 no. This is the way it is. You know what I mean? Wow. You see how simple you made it sound? And it's funny how your son made noises in the background. That's like Jesus confirming that even a child could understand this. Right? Because you're exactly right. People just, they, when they come to know Jesus, they grab a doctrine and hold on to their life, don't they? And, mm-hmm. they? and they rely on their pastors. They rely on the footnotes. Instead of reading the Bible, they read the footnotes all the time. Instead of learning and getting taught by the Holy Ghost, they're listening to the, the Bible studies on, on TV all day. 
right? So you're right. Because if they did that, they would be in the middle of the road. Because my God tells me repeatedly in the Bible who Jesus Christ is. Paul said that rock was Christ. Remember when speaking about Moses in, in, um, in uh, Corinthians, mm-hmm. right? Remember yeah. he said that? He was like the rock that set them. That rock was Christ. Right? Oh, so when thing. Jesus Christ came to visit Adam in the Garden of Eden, that was Christ. So oh. so this is phenomenal to me. My God oh. in heaven, thank you. Thank you for showing us your son, Jesus Christ. Look at this. Look at this so clearly now. Just watch this. So Jesus Christ is the literal heart, personality, and mind of God Almighty. He is literally the heart of God. So that means in Genesis, because we read in John, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And everybody quotes that, but they just say, oh, that Word is Jesus Christ. But they don't really sit and meditate, and that's the Lord to show them the depths of what that really means. That means that in Genesis, like you mentioned earlier, brother, that in the beginning of Genesis, God created the heavens and the earth. And whenever God spoke, things created, right? That means that whenever God spoke, out of his mouth came Jesus Christ. Mm. Whatever was on God's mind, Jesus came out of his mouth. What? (laughs) Who is he? Who is Christ? Bro, this this will strike terror in the heart of a man, cuz. When they realize that Jesus Christ, beyond just the Son of God, beyond just our high priest, beyond just our Lamb of God, beyond just the Son of Man, that Jesus Christ is the literal words of God coming from his heart. That's where the tremble comes in. Wowzers! I don't want to play with God when I... How can God show this to us and we play with him, cuz? Why do you got to knock on my door day in and day out for me to do a deep, long fast? And I'm running like Jonah, eating a taco, running. Just, Lord, I'm, I'll fast, Lord. I promise. I'm, give me like a week, Lord. I'm pre- preparing myself mentally. I can't fool God. <laughs> yeah, have you ever tried to like, when it's it's the night before fasting, you try to eat everything in the crib, thinking like, okay. <laughs> That way, at least I won't desire it. Yo, isn't it like twice as hard when you do that? Yeah, it's twice as hard. You know what I'm saying? You're like, okay, you try to justify it, like, baby, get dressed, we're going out to eat. Why? You know, we fasting tomorrow, we should indulge yeah. tonight. <laughs> you go to the China spot, buffet, come home, get prepped, wake up, already getting stomach pain, already getting a headache. You're like, eh, first day, I'm already feeling weak. Lord Jesus, help me, I got five days to go. But, man, how could we notice about Christ? Like, all right, another phenomenal thing that just blows the mind. Yo, here you got in the Gospel of John, right? Gospel of John. Look at this. They ask Jesus. They come for Jesus, right? Mm-hmm. And they, come, they come for the Lord. And the Lord said, who is it you see? 18, look at this in Jesus' name. When Jesus spoke in these words, he went forth and his disciples over the book Cedron, where was a garden into which he entered, and his disciples. And Judas also, which betrayed him, knew the place, for Jesus oftentimes resorted thither with his disciples. And Judas, Judas then, having received a band of men and officers from the chief priests and Pharisees, come hither with lanterns and torches and weapons. Yo, this got nothing to do with it, but I'm going to just put it out there. Judas is a foreshadow of the Antichrist. Judas is the only one other than the Antichrist called the son of perdition. That itself is a Bible study. And you notice how the Antichrist will be given soldiers and priests and people to hunt down the saints of God with torches and weapons to kill them. Just like Judas. Look at this. 
Jesus, therefore, knowing all things that should come upon him, went forth and said to them, Who do you seek? They answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus said to them, I am he. And Judas also, which betrayed him, stood with them. And soon as he had said to them, I am he, they went backwards and fell to the ground. I've said this before. What you think these soldiers looked like that fell back like punks? You think Rome had some stick figures? Some weak emaciated men with armor on? Or were these brothers looking like wrestlers? Yep. Looking like Hulk Hogan, B. Mm-hmm. Them brothers, they, them men fell backwards like like in, in, in straight terror, <laughs> fell backwards and fell on they they backs, cuz. What could do that to them? What is that? Because people don't study their Bibles. You read in Isaiah, you read in Psalms where the Lord himself says, Jehovah says, know this that I am he. It is I am that does these things, that I am he has done these things. Jesus Christ in the face of flesh was saying, I am God Almighty. And it was almost like the inner man knew who he was, but the flesh didn't know who he was. And they just fell backwards. We're dealing with a supernatural almighty being to the point where in the beginning of the gospel, look at what interesting wordplay. Look at the wordplay in Matthew. Watch this. Watch this. This is when um when uh Gabriel Gabriel visits Mary, right? Uh-huh. Look at what he says. Um Chapter 1, the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of... Okay, hold on. I'm looking I'm looking for a particular verse. All the gun, it was might be sure, was spoken to the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, the virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Well, can, what would you do? What? Yo, imagine your wife. If it was 2,000 years ago and she was married, you can ask your wife, how would she react? You're like, oh, oh, listen, I'm an angel of the Lord sent to tell you that the Holy One, the Holy Ghost is going to move upon you. And what is placed inside of you will be God Himself. Ah. No, I can't. I can't even comprehend if 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 I could just look through the eyes of Mary on that day, and be like, hold on, I know you're an angel, Gabriel, and I don't want to disrespect you, but uh, say that again. God, the Creator of heaven and earth, is gonna go into my womb and grow. This is so powerful. But look at this, not even what I was talking about, though. It must be um, Mark. Hold on. Let's go to Mark real quick. Let's go to Mark. It must be Mark. Wait a minute. Mark. Come on. Is it, is it Mark? Let me see. No, no. It, let's try Luke. Let's try Luke. We'll search him on until we find it in Jesus' name. Thank you, Holy One of Israel. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping for, for Luke. Yeah, it's looking it's looking good. It's looking good. Hold on. So is it oh Jeffrey Bryant? Okay, hold on. Let me check Elizabeth. Going down. All right. Twenty eight of chapter one. And the angel came to her and said, Hail, thou art highly favored. The Lord is with me. Blessed art thou among women. Why? Why? Because Mary some goddess? No. Because she's carrying God in her womb for nine months. 
And when God comes out of a womb, she's going to feed him breast milk. Oh, my God. <laughs> Whoa. Right? That, that, yeah. Whoa. Right? Wow. Look at this. Look at this. And when she saw him, she was troubled at this saying. You betcha she was. And cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said to her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son, and shalt call his name Jesus. He shall be great and shall be called the Son of the Highest. The Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. Listen to this. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing that I know not a man? And the angel answered and said to her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing, which shall be called shall be born of thee, shall be called the Son of God. What you mean by the Holy Thing? You see the word play there? That's what I was looking for. That Holy Thing? I thought it was a human. Why don't you say that Holy Child, that Holy Thing? Though Jesus is beyond just a man. This is what people have to comprehend. He is not just a man. Here you got, here you got Jesus Christ. The son of man sleeping at the bottom of the boat, right? The disciples are terrified. Water splashing on the boat. The wind is wilding. Everything, they, man, they thought they was dying, cuz. Was the son of God sleeping or the son of man sleeping? Which one was Amen. it? Was God the man was snoozing, cuz. But God was up the whole time. <laughs> Yo, like, all right, all right, all right, look at, our, at the book of Acts. This is why I love fellowship, because I'm going to tell you like this. There's something mystical and mysterious about when the brethren, the beloved, the brothers and sisters come together in one accord just to talk about Jesus, isn't it? Because I can sit alone in my whip right now, and I would get awesome revelations because the Holy Ghost is my teacher. But it wouldn't be the same as now. Like, I can talk out loud to nobody, and it would be a great sermon for me, myself, but it's not the same where two or more are gathered in his name, is it? Yeah. That's why we cannot forsake the gathering together. That's why we must put aside our differences and come together in truth and in spirit in one accord in one mind. Remember I told you earlier, it's better to be fellowshipping with one man who's in agreement with me than have 50 people on a conference and only 10 of them in agreement and 40 of them are doubting and trying to interrupt with questions that have nothing to do with the Bible study. Jesus himself said, what did he say when they're healing that child? He said, all y'all get out of the room. <laughs> Jesus said, get out of here, man. Yeah, y'all messing with me. <laughs> I don't like the stench of doubt. It smells like crap in here. Can y'all please leave? Oh. Man, look it in the book of Acts. And, brother, any time you got anything to add, again, you already know what it is. But look at what he said in chapter 1. Chapter 1, look at this. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Uh, I just read the whole joint, but I'm not going to do it. All right. Let's start at verse 16 of chapter 1 of Acts. Men and brethren, this scripture must needs have been fulfilled, which the Holy Ghost by the mouth of David spoke before concerning Judas, which was guide to them that took Jesus. The Holy Ghost by the mouth of David? Right. I, thought the Holy, I, thought, I thought nobody had the Holy Ghost until Jesus gave it. You see how the word will defend and protect? Look at this. Huh? Look at this. For he was numbered with us and had obtained part of this ministry. Now this man purchased a field with the reward of iniquity and falling headlong he burst asunder in the midst and all his bowels gushed out. Why did that happen, brother? Why did the man's guts come out? 
because his God was his belly. Mm. God had to destroy that God. Wow. Look at wow. this. It was known unto all the dwellers at Jerusalem, insomuch as that field is called in their proper tongue, al Kadama. That is to say, the field of blood. You bet it is. Isn't it interesting? And I've said this in the Bible study once. How here you got Judas betrayed Jesus to buy a field. And here you got Barnabas. People want to sleep on Barnabas, but that's my, that's, my, that's my brother right there, man. Yo, B, don't sleep on B. Paul, I ain't going to front. Paul got a lot of letters. Paul went hard. But B went his path, too. You feel me? Yo, B, his name means son of honor. B sold his field to give money to Jesus. See the contrast? Judas sold, sold out Jesus for money to buy a field. Barnabas sold his field to get money for Jesus. You see what I'm saying? Yo, yeah. that's amazing to me. But, I mean, that has nothing to do with it. Were you going to say something, brother? No, no, no. Oh, okay, I, I didn't know if you said something. So look what it says, though. For it is written in the book of Psalms, let his habitation be desolate, and let no man dwell therein, his bishop prick, let another take. Wherefore, these men which have companies with us all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among them, among us, beginning from the baptism of John until the same day that he was taken up from us, one uh, be ordained to be a witness of us in the resurrection, right? So you know they, they cast their lots, but this is what I want to show you in chapter 2. After... After um, after the uh, what's it called? The day of Pentecost, right? Look at this. You know what? We chilling, right? Let's not even do that. Let, this is what we're gonna do. We fifty seven minutes into this. I thank the Lord Jesus Christ for this fellowship. Starting in chapter two, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, there were all with one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like of fire as it sat upon each of them. Hold on. Brother, what is a cloven tongue? Hmm. That's a tongue split in two. Hmm. See, this is what I mean when people got to stop. Hold on. They got tongues like a serpent? What's that supposed to mean? Because my Bible says to be as wise as a serpent and harmless as a dove. Can't you see? They had the cloven tongue, and the dove was upon them. Uh. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Look at this. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. You bet they were. And spoke, began to spoke with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now, what kind of tongue were they speaking, my beloved brother? Were they speaking earthly tongues, but tongues they didn't know? Or were they speaking heavenly tongues? Because my Bible says they spoke in Arabic and Herak and Greek and all, uh, you know what I'm saying, and Gies and um, all different types of languages, right? Yeah. So it was, it was languages that existed upon the earth, but God did that to show they was going to preach the gospel to the four corners of the earth, and they didn't need no interpreter with them. Hallelujah. <laughs> That the Holy Ghost will send you to France and you're going to be like Gemma Pell. <laughs> Merci beaucoup. <laughs> the Lord is going to send you to Kenya and you're going to say, Buona Safiwe. <laughs> He's going to send you to Jamaica and you're going to say, Wag one, brethren. The Lord is coming. He'll send you down to Georgia and you're going to be like, Hey, y'all. Praise you, Lord. Golly, you see the power of the Holy Ghost here. Look at this. Look at this. Um, and they all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there dwelled at Jerusalem Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. Wow, was Jerusalem popping. Yo, that was an on and popping city now, wasn't it? Every nation came to Jerusalem. They knew there was something mysterious about that city. 
There's something amazing that goes on there because there's a gateway opened up over Jerusalem. That's why all the nations are fighting against Israel now because they know there's a portal opened up over there. That joint ripped open even in the days of Abraham when he offered up Isaac. Jacob, when he slept on the rock and looked up to heaven and seen the heavens open and a ladder coming down, and he said, my God, this is the house of the Lord. Oh, man, we got to go to Israel, bro. Look at this. Look at this. Now, when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galilean? How hear we every man in our own tongue wherein that we were born? Parthians, Medans, Elamites, dwellers in Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, Asia, Persia, Pamphylia, Egypt, parts of Libya, Cyrene, strangers of Rome, Jews, proselytes, Cretes, Arabians, we do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of God. And they were all amazed and were in doubt, saying one to another, what does this mean? Others mocking said, these men are full of new wine. Yo, can you want to hear something interesting about that? Even though he was mocking, he was telling the truth. Uh, he was talking about physical new wine, but God filled them with spiritual new wine. <laughs> Yo, yo, yo. Oh, my Lord in heaven. No, but Peter, standing up with the 11, lifted up his voice. Now, listen to this man. It says, and Peter, standing up, said, hold on. Let us go to the music store. We got to buy speakers. We got to buy a microphone. We got to get drums. Let's build the stage before we talk to these people. Now, that, does that say that in your Bible? Nah. It didn't say, what's nah. wrong with my Bible? Yeah, what kind of book is it? I'm just kidding. He said, he just simply lifted up his voice and said to them, you men of Judea, and all you that dwell in Jeru at Jerusalem, be this known unto you and hearken to my words. For these are not drunken, as you suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. This is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last day, says God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaidens, I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in heaven above, and signs in the earth, blood, fire, vapors of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. You men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, Yeshua Mshadi, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs, which God did by him in the midst of you, as you yourselves also know. Him being delivered by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God, you have taken and by wicked hands have crucified and slain. Man, that's hard words, cuz. Death, because it was not possible that he should be held by death. <laughs> it was impossible. Listen to this. Watch this. For David speak concerning him, I foresaw the Lord always before my face. For he is on my right hand, that I should not be moved. Therefore did my heart rejoice, and my tongue was glad. Moreover, also my flesh shall rest in hope. Now, before I move on to verse 27, let me encourage you and anybody else that would hear a message like this. How did Peter speak like this, brother? This man just got done denying the Lord not too long ago. And swam over to Jesus like you told me um, when you called and, and, and gave me that word, right? 
that good word of how much Peter loved the Lord, right? And Peter came to Jesus, and Jesus said him three times, do you love me? And maybe he weeped. He said, Lord, you know I love you. You know I love you. I'm in the stank flesh, Lord, and I be dumb sometimes, and I've I got afraid, oh, God, but you know I love you, Lord. How many of us have felt like that? But that's not what I'm talking about. Let me tell you something about God. And never forget this. When Gideon was weak, it wasn't his strength that was given to him. It was the strength of God that was given to him when the angel visited him and said, Thou man of honor and, and courage, thou man of value. Right? So what do you think happened to Peter? Was it him or did the Holy Ghost supernaturally take over his tongue? Naturally. So what do we got to worry about when it comes to preaching to the people? Who is going to speak for us in that day? Spirit. You uh, won't be quoting scriptures you ain't even know you knew. Talk about it is written in Habakkuk chapter 2. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Hallelujah. Uh, look, what it, look what this says. Look what this says. Because this is where I'm getting at. The whole reason I brought this chapter, so much other was given to us, but this is what I've been waiting for. You ready for it? Watch this. Mm -hmm. In Jesus' mighty name. Hold on. This, oh, man. Oh, man, this is good. We've got to keep going. 27. Because thou will not leave my soul in hell, neither will thou suffer thy holy one to see corruption. Holy one? Holy one? Have you ever read in Isaiah and caught that before when I say the Holy One of Israel has said it? The Holy One? Oh, man. We're going to get into that, Lord willing. Thou hast made known to me the ways of life, and thou shalt make full of joy with my, my countenance. Now, what we're going to do, now watch this. Men and brethren, let me freely speak to you of the patriarch David, that he is both dead and buried, and his life is in the tomb with us unto this day. Therefore, being a prophet, and knowing that God has sworn with an oath to him, you know, you notice I barely ever hear people talking about David as a prophet, right? right. Just as a king. They only remember the warrior side of David was a warlord. David ran just straight, what's the word I'm looking for? When you're fearless, fearlessly into the crowd of the Philistines saying, I must get 200 foreskins from you. 200 of you must die, and I'm taking your foreskins back to Saul the king because I want my wife. Hmm. Look, at, look at what he called David a prophet, though. But being a prophet and knowing that God has sworn with an oath to him that of the fruit of his loins, according to the flesh, according to the flesh, according to the flesh, he would raise up Christ to sit on his throne. What? Hold on. Hold on. What? So what you're telling me, God, is that according to the flesh, Jesus Christ will sit on the throne of David forever. This is why it's simplicity to know that Jesus Christ is God the Father as a man. We had Adam in the origin of, of Eden, and they went as far to call Abraham their father. No, 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 no. You want to come and persecute me because I called Jesus my father. But how many of you have called Abraham your father? Mm. Does that make sense? Mm. Wow. And you know what blows my mind? How in John, go to John, go to John, watch this. This is so humbling. 
And again, we spoke of this last night. In Jesus' name. Look. Look at this. Hold on. He said, fill up verse 8 of 14. John 14, verse 8. Look at this. Look at this. We're going to start at verse 6 in Jesus' name. Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. If you had known me, you should have known the fa- my Father also. From henceforth you know him and have seen him. Well, wait a minute. What are you talking about, Lord? Because half the Christians that try to fight with me say that you're not the Father. So how did we see the Father if my Bible says that God in heaven is an invisible God? Look at this, look at this, look at this. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father. And it is enough for us. What did Jesus say, bro? Jesus said to him, have I been so long time with you, and yet you do not know me, Philip? He that has seen me has seen the Father. How say thou then, Show us the Father. How could somebody hear that verse and try to box around it? I think I think what we need to do, all Christians listening to this, this is what we need to do. This is what we need to do. Let's imagine that we are one of the 12 disciples and we're actually with Jesus right now. Bro, you ready for this? Mm-hmm. So we're going to rewind it 2,000 years ago because sometimes the paper and the ink is not good enough for people. They don't know the word is alive. So let's mm-hmm. go back 2,000 years ago. We're with Jesus. Now I don't want you to try to envision some white guy. But we're with Jesus. All you see is light. Just pretend there's light, although there was a physical man there and he had a beautiful physical face, although the Bible says that the people um, did not desire to look upon mm-hmm. him. So he probably, you know, he probably came so humble when well, he was an average-looking guy. But let's just say this. We're, we're talking with Jesus, right? And I'm going to play the role. I'm going to play the role of the voice of Philip and a couple other disciples as well so y'all can kind of get the storyline. Jesus is talking to them. Now, here's Jesus, right? Jesus. Look at, look at this. What, now, we're all together with Jesus. We're sitting with him. Jesus says, now, I want you to envision this in your eyes. You're in this upper room somewhere. I'm just giving an example. We're at a table together, whatever. Jesus speaks and says, I am the truth, the light, and the way. No man comes to the Father but by me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From henceforth, you know him, and you have seen him. Now, you're in the room with Jesus right now physically. Who's the only one you can see? Jesus. Jesus. All right. So this is going on in your mind right now. You're trying to understand what Jesus is saying. Because, Lord, what are you trying to say to me here? Uh, all right. Now, here comes Philip. He he stands up boldly just to make sure he, he, he doesn't think what he thinks he thinks. Because he's like, wait a minute, Jesus. Are you trying to say you're the Father? Because, Lord, just, I'll tell you what, Jesus. Just show us the Father. Lord. Yes, yes, Philip. Show us the Father. How long have I been with you, and you do not know me? Let that sink in. Now who do you think he is? You see what I'm saying? This is the great mystery of godliness according to Timothy. God was manifested in the flesh, justified in the scene of angels. God was manifested in the flesh. Jesus Christ is the heart of God. If you can pull the voice box of God out, pull his heart out, 
pull his brain out and stuff it in a flesh body, it would be Jesus. I can't even comprehend that. But yet he's allowing me to. You got to have so much more respect for Jesus. So much more reverence for the great and mighty king. That if he said, go now and preach my word, you wouldn't hesitate. This to me makes me feel so rich. Doesn't it make you feel rich to know the deeper meaning of who Christ is? Yes, he is the Lamb of God. His blood was shed for our sins. And I will continue to speak about the blood of Jesus despite Miles Monroe, despite all of these false prophets. It was the blood of Jesus. And he was, this is, all right, listen to this carefully, saints, right? Listen to this, 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 this will blow your mind. Jesus Christ was the Lamb of God as well as the high priest offering up the Lamb of God. What? Come again, old time out, buddy. God is not a God of confusion. Well, then get out of the flesh, bro. You know what I'm saying? That's my new, that's my new saying. Somebody like, this doesn't make sense. God is not the author of confusion. No, he ain't confusing. He just ain't in the spirit right now. Jesus Christ offered up himself. He was the lamb as well as the high priest simultaneously. I mean, this this goes on and on and on and on and on. And and I and I know we're pushing an hour and twenty minutes, right? But just just please walk with me. Walk with me to Proverbs real quick. Mm-hmm. Walk with me to Proverbs real quick. Oh, my Lord. Walk with me to Proverbs chapter 8. Just watch this. You know Solomon, right? Despite his mm-hmm. stubbornness, despite his rebellion, the mercy and the love that God had for David, he still blessed Solomon tremendously, didn't he? Yep. You know, men of God, be careful how you look at your children. There is an anointing on them. They may look rebellious at times. They may look like they don't really want to pray or whatever the case be, but there is an anointing on your children when you love Jesus Christ. Store up that anointing. Lay hands on your children. Even if they're not from your loins, if you take them in as a father, stir up the gifts in them. Last time I checked, Timothy was not from the loins of Paul the virgin. Hallelujah. Look at this. This is coming from a man who was the second wisest man to walk the earth. Something we should learn from him. Look at this carefully. Watch this. Does not wisdom cry and understanding put forth her voice? She stands in the top of high places by the way in the place of the paths. She cries at the gates, at the entry of the city, at the coming and at the doors. Unto you, O men, I call, and my voice is the sons of man. O you simple, understand wisdom, and you fools. Be you of an understanding heart. Hear, for I will speak of excellent things, and the opening of my lips shall be right things. For my mouth shall speak truth, and wickedness is an abomination to my lips. That was starting to sound like Jesus, isn't it? He only spoke truth, and he cried out in the city, didn't he? Didn't he cry out all the time? Look at this. All the words of my mouth are in righteousness. There is nothing evil or perverse in them. No man could say that but Jesus. They are all plain to him that understands. 
and write to them that find knowledge. So he's saying, to understand me, it's very simple if you would just find me. But if you don't seek me, it's, 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 you, you can't comprehend it, right? Receive my instruction and not silver and knowledge rather than choice gold. For wisdom is better than rubies, and all things that may be desired are not to be compared to it. I, wisdom, dwell with prudence and find out knowledge of witty invention. Listen to this. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride and arrogance and the evil way, and the forward mouth do I hate. When do you ever hear that? That the fear of the Lord is not to just avoid evil, not to just dislike evil, but to hate evil. Man and woman of God that could be hearing this right now, honestly ask yourself, do you hate evil? I'm not talking about the people. But do you hate the evil? Or do you just a little bit dislike it? You tolerate it sometimes. My Bible says you're supposed to hate it with a passion. Counsel is mine, and sound wisdom, I am understanding, I have strength. By me kings reign, and princes decree justice. Well, let's break this down. The Bible says God sets up a king and brings the king down now, doesn't he? Yep. By me princes rule the nobles, even the judges of all the earth. I love them that love me, and those that seek me early shall find me. Seek me <laughs> early? Oh, boy, am I cut to the heart waking up at 11 sometimes. Riches and honor are with me. Yes, durable riches and righteousness. What do you mean by durable? You ever go to buy a tire from the lot and say, this is a durable tire. This will last you at least a year or two. He's saying, mm-hmm. when I give you riches and righteousness, it will last you eternity. My food is better than gold and fine gold, yes. My revenue than choice silver. I lead in the way. You notice how he's got to repeat that? Because look at the modern day, quote, unquote, church. Let's be honest. Most people do things simply because they want God to bless them. They want that new car. They want to have millions. The Bible says seek not to be rich. If it's God's will for you to be rich, if you want the few that God chooses to make a rich person, it's only simply to supply the needs of the church. (laughs) Right? He chose you to be rich because you're dead to the riches. It doesn't move you. It doesn't affect you. Well, I mean, there's rich, wicked people, but I'm talking about righteous men of God. He will bless some to be financially, bananasly abundant to supply the needs of the church. Mm-hmm. It's very simple. Look at this, because we're getting somewhere. I 20, I lead in the way of righteousness in the midst of the past of judgment, that I may cause those that love me to inherit substance, and I will fill their treasures. So now this whole time, Solomon is speaking as wisdom, right? Wisdom mm-hmm. is literally speaking here. It's not Solomon. Now listen to what he says. Lord possessed me in the beginning of his way, before his works of old. Listen to this. I was set up from everlasting, from the beginning, or ever the earth was. When there were no depths, I was brought forth. Oh, my God. I'm terrified, Lord. Hold on a minute, man. Before when it was brought forth. When there was no fountains abounding with water, before the mountains were settled, before the hills was, I was brought forth. While as yet he had not made the earth nor the fields nor the highest part of the dust of the world. When he prepared the heavens, I was there. When he set up a compass upon the face of the depth. When he established the clouds above. When he strengthened the fountains of the deep. When he gave to the sea his decree. When the, and that the water should not pass his commandment. When he appointed the foundation of the earth, then I was by him as one brought up with him. And I was daily his delight, rejoicing always before him. 
wait a minute, what? In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. It's hidden in Proverbs chapter 11. Is that what you're telling me? I mean, chapter 7, chapter 8? In chapter 8? But look at the word play now, and let's see if it, it confirms what we're talking about. Listen to the care, listen to the word play. I was set up from everlasting. When there was no depth, I was brought forth. Where was Jesus Christ brought forth from? The heart of God. He came out of the mouth of God. Whenever God spoke, it said, let us make man. Out of the mouth of Jehovah God came the Jesus Christ, the Lord. What? Out of the mouth of God proceeded Jesus Christ? I'm done, man. I can't handle this right now, cuz. Lord Jesus, all we're asking is keep us where ego, pride, arrogance, self-will, love of self, never bind your men and women of God, Lord. That the more you teach us of your ways, the more you show us your truth, the more we get humbled and the more we lift you up. I can only imagine, Lord, the reason John the Baptist had to say, I must decrease for Christ to increase, was because he couldn't handle doing anything but that. He knew too much of you. He was your best friend in the womb you met him. He loved you in a separate way. For John is not who you think he is, brothers and sisters. He's a man, yes. He's not God. But did you know that John, you ever see in a wedding how you've got the husband and wife marrying, and then you've got the best man that sits aside and watches? You know, the mm -hmm. best man, right? Do you know that John is the best man? He said that I must behold this, that my happiness is complete. John said, I am not even worthy to even loosen his tent. Not even worthy to lace up his sandals. You see, the more God gives you, the more you must profess that you must decrease. Because let me tell you about the flesh. Let me tell you about the Adamic nature. Let me tell you, because there's two sins mentioned in the Bible, brothers and sisters. You got sins that you commit that you want to stop committing, and then you got sin nature. Some of y'all didn't know that. The sin nature is what you're born with. That's why Adam had to come through the womb of a virgin. He could not have the DNA of an earthly father. That means there was something in his DNA that was not of this earth. That doesn't make you tremble. That doesn't make you terrified to know that Jesus Christ walked around as a man with DNA from heaven. Search the scriptures yourself. Stop listening to, stop reading man's opinions in books, footnotes. You read the word of God for yourself and trust in the Holy Ghost. Trust in the Holy Ghost to teach you, to show you. Then you can hear the opinions of other men. I'm not telling you not to fellowship. Let's not be foolish. I'm saying that you must study alone with God. Oh, I just can't understand the King James. Now, don't use King James. We're not King James only, although I use King James. At some point, you might want to step away from the NIV. But I'm not going to yoke you if you can't understand the King James and say you must read the King James. Start off with jumping jacks and stretch your muscles before you run. But you must study to show yourself approved. We are running out of time. And you must know who he is because he is the one who is returning to earth to reign. Hallelujah. 
and Jesus Christ is going to know. He is going to search the reins of the heart. And he's going to know how much of him is in you. And that it will be the proof of how much you love him. When we all present ourselves to Jesus on that day, imagine we all have a pitcher of water. Some just got two drops in it. They barely made it in. They made it, but they barely made it in. Some got their pitchers half full, some a quarter full, and some got it filled. Which one do you want to be? I want to be filled. I want them to see me and say, you really, really love me, Wally. You love me. You search me. Real quick before we wrap this up, right? Look at what it says in Jude, chapter 1, because there's only one chapter. Look at what it says in verse 21, uh, 9, we'll start at 20 going down, Jude. But you, beloved, building up yourselves in your most holy faith, building up yourselves. What does that mean? Look what it says. Praying in the Holy Ghost. Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto the eternal life. And listen to this. And have, and of some have compassion, making a difference. And others say with fear, pulling them out of the fire. Hating even the garment part of it. Do you know there's going to be some that just make it in just at the last minute they're pulled out of the fire? You know how valuable of a lesson that is to me? And I'm going to say this to everybody listening. Listen to this carefully. Right now, you see a lot of people bugging and playing with God, right? You see a lot of people wilding, and some of them ain't going to make it. I don't know who they are, but I know for a fact some of them ain't going to make it. It's God's will that all make it, right, that none perish. But let's just be real. The Bible says hell is, is enlarging herself. Kind of like when you put a water balloon to a faucet and fill it with water, it stretches. Hell is stretching with human souls, right? But let me tell you something about God. He is not done with people. Do not underestimate nobody. It'd be the one person you give up on and say, man, they're done. They're hell bound. Be the same one God snatches out of the fire at the last minute. Never judge a fruit tree in the winter. Because when the season changes, it'll bear forth fruit. All you do is pray and fast for these lost souls. And hope to God they make it. But don't you ever condemn nobody. You have to obey the scriptures. If a brother be called the brother, be a fornicator, note that person and, and rebuke them, the Bible says, and have no company with them that they may be ashamed. See, your problem is most of y'all be joking with people. You be trying to be friends with sinful, devilish Christians, family members, people you grew up with. You want to be all sweet and cupcake to them. You damning them to hell. You ain't even helping them. My Bible says you're supposed to let them know. We are not supposed to judge, brother. But if I hear that one more time, Lord Jesus sent a mighty warrior angel to seal up that person's mouth for a year, like like uh, John's dad, Zacho, who was it, Zachariah? Mm-hmm. Was that? Saying that, dog? Are you really saying that? Hold on, did I just hear? You know what? You're not talking for a year, B. Nine months, be quiet. Straight up. So my prayer is that we get a greater revelation of who Christ is. We're, we're dealing with some, I can't, I don't even know how to say him. We're dealing with the God of heaven, right? And we're trying to comprehend who he really is. We know he's God, but who is he, though? Like, oh, my Lord. I can never deny Jesus as my father. Do you know that? I can never deny him as my father. And I just have a simple question for you Christians that want to fight over this. I have a question for you. 
two men are standing before Almighty God on the judgment seat. One man stands there, and God looks at him and says, How dare you call Jesus the Father? I know he's exactly like me. I know when you see him, you see me. I know that he's my mind, my personality, but why would you call him Father? Get behind me and go to hell. Now, tell me if that sounds like something God would do. But let me ask you this, though. Would you rather be in that predicament or a person that stands before the Father and says, how could you stand before Jesus and Jesus looks at you and go, you denied me as your father and I am your father? I wouldn't ask you with fear and trembling, which one would you rather be? The guy who just, oh, oh Lord, I, thought you, I mean, you're just like God. You are God. You created everything. I can't help but to call you father because you are my father. Or would you rather be the man that says, Jesus, you're not my father? That's my question for you, Christian. Answer wisely and answer fearfully. I know he is my father, and I know there is a father-son relationship. I know that. I will never deny the father and son relationship either. I will never say that there is no father and son but just Jesus alone. I will never say that either because I'm in the middle of the road. God is a mystery. My prayer is that God will cause you to seek his face like never before. That you roll off your bed at 2 in the morning, you wake up and you just can't help but to pray and read. On your lunch break, you just can't wait for 12 o'clock to go read the Bible in your car. You can't wait to put your child down to sleep at home so you can get alone in the closet and worship the King of Glory. May the Lord Jesus Christ give you so much hunger. It's simply like a human body. The only reason you want to eat is because your body, your brain, releases a chemical that causes your stomach to become hungry. God release that. Release that hunger that makes us want to eat the word of God, that makes us want to eat the bread of life. Oh, wow. That is my prayer. Because I know the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any double-edged sword. Love the Lord God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your body, and all that's within. And love thy neighbor as thyself. Man, it's hard sometimes. We got neighbors that hate us, neighbors that commit sin, neighbors that plot against us, neighbors that just are wicked, and we ought to love them now, aren't we? What good is it to only love those that love you? What is the reward in that? Be of good courage. Be encouraged that the Lord has spoken to you this day. Receive the word and don't let it go and don't let the devil take it out of your heart. Protect it with all you got. Seal it up in the blood of Jesus and study the scriptures and genuinely want to seek out Christ and who he is to, that I may know him, Paul said. He says, I count everything that I may know him. Do you want to know Jesus? Are you holding on to him like Jacob and saying, I will not let you go, Jesus, until you bless me. I won't let you go until I get to know you greater. I am not letting you out of my sight, Elijah, a.k.a. Jesus. I refuse to let you walk away from me. I don't want to walk away from you. You have to have that mind in these last days. These are perilous times where if it was possible, even the very elect will be deceived. Get ready, saints. Get ready for anything and everything. Get ready for, for alien spaceships to come and try to trick us. Get ready for fallen angels to appear and say they're God. Get ready for an antichrist that can call down fire from heaven. Get ready for an invasion of people that hate you and want to cut your head off. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready for the Holy Ghost power. Get ready to proclaim the gospel in your city. Get ready to make the blind see, the deaf hear, the sick to be brought back, the dead to be raised, the crippled to walk, the crackheads to be healed. Get ready. What do you think the plant does when the storm clouds come? They look up and say, drop your rain and I'll suck it up. 
and I'll cause it to be life in me. Get ready. Are you ready? For those that look for me, shall I return? For those that look for me, shall I return? Are you looking for him? Or you're just studying the read because you know it's your duty. It's, it's, a, it's a chore to you. Break that yoke and say, Jesus, I don't want it to be a chore. I want it to be a, a hunger. I can't go a day without your word. I can't go a week without fasting. I can't go a day without worshiping you. I, can't, I cannot seek the Lord without seeking it with my wife, without seeking it with my husband, seeking it with my children. Now, if they refuse, that's a different story. You just keep moving. You have to tell people about Jesus. You must tell people about Jesus. Don't worry, Jesus said to Jeremiah. Don't worry about their faces. Just tell them about me. You must tell people about Jesus. Every single day, you ask God for wisdom. Who could I tell you? Who could I tell about you to? In Jesus' name, may this word go through you and in you and stay in you. And pray for me that it will stay in me. In Jesus' name. Amen.